this service together for you, and welcome to all of you who are watching online and worshiping. Um, the weather hasn't gotten bad here yet, and hopefully it will miss us, but we can always hope and pray. But for those who are out on the roads where it is bad, we pray for their safe travel. It is the second Sunday after the Epiphany, um, and is the commemoration of, um, let's see, oh, uh, didn't change something there. So anyway, um, our opening hymn is hymn number seven, Christ whose glory fills the skies. Our service begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed, and blessed be, be his kingdom, kingdom now, now and forever. forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. In our Hebrew scripture lesson, the prophet continues to look forward to the full restoration of Jerusalem, hoping that the city may one day be a source of joy as a bride is to her bridegroom. A reading from the book of Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory. You shall have been called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken and your land shall no more be termed desolate, but you shall be called my delight is in her and your land married for the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder be, marry you, and the bridegroom rejoices over the bride. So shall your God rejoice over you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Using your bulletin, please join me in reading Psalm 36 responsibly. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains, your justice like the great deep. You save both man and beast, O Lord. How priceless is your love, O God. Your people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They feast upon the abundance of your house. You gave them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the well of life and in your light we see light. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you and your favor to those the true heart. In this reading, Paul commends spiritual gifts but instructs the Corinthians in their proper use of, in the service of Jesus' Lordship. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. There are varieties of, of activities, but it is the same God who activates all them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one the, is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another dis the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, another the interpretation of tongues. All those who are activated by one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually just as the spirit chooses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there, there were six stone jars for the Jew- water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. It was only ten days ago that the church observed the Feast of the Epiphany. It commemorates the first manifestation of the young Jesus Christ to the Gentiles as represented by the wise men or magi who had seen a sign, a star that led them to this holy child. These wise men weren't Jewish. They were Gentiles. And God had made known to them this birth, a birth that was so significant that they were willing to set aside their lives in order to search for the one that they said was born King of the Jews. The next great insight into the life of Jesus of Nazareth came in the manifestation of his divinity as it occurred at his baptism in the River Jordan, which we celebrated last Sunday, when the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And now this brings us to this Sunday, and the first of Jesus' miracles, which took place at Cana in Galilee. It is also the beginning of a new year, one that brings with it new hopes and expectations, hope that comes with the coming of light as the days begin to lengthen and our eyes are opened to see more of the world around us, a hope that calls us to move beyond the divisions that separate us in our country, politically, racially, and financially, a hope that looks for the end of this COVID pandemic that puts us back in this isolated situation once again, a hope that will lead to a better way of living, a healthier way of living, a more faithful way of living. All will be different, we pray, and this will be a better year than the last. God only knows how desperately we need this hope in our troubled world. So much has gone wrong. But even with this awareness, we cling to hope. We always think the new must be better than the old, and we enter each new year hoping. The Gospel of John is quite different from the synoptic Gospels, you know, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And there is something absolutely fitting in the story he chooses to tell of the first sign or miracle that ushers in the public ministry of Jesus. 
It happens at a wedding feast. So many hopeful first come together in this story. The bride and groom are setting out on a new beginning as husband and wife. They have invited many guests. Mary, the mother of Jesus, is there along with him and his disciples. It is the beginning of a ministry that will change the course of history. But no one knows this at the time of the wedding celebration. The first hint of it will come during the wedding feast when the wine runs out and we are given a sign, an epiphany, that the kingdom of God is at hand. Creative energy surges through this story like the energy of a new hope that greets the beginning of each new year. Even though Jesus says to his mother, who has brought the news that the wine has run out, that my hour has not yet come, she still tells the servants to do whatever Jesus tells them to do, just like a mother. Six large stone jars are filled with water. And then through the creative power of the one who has been here from the beginning of creation, as John so eloquently says in the prologue of his gospel, all things came into being through him and without him not one thing came into being. Jesus. Jesus then turns the water into wine and the servants and disciples see that this particular guest is not an ordinary person. On many occasions throughout his short ministry, Jesus will try to avoid the use of miracles. At the beginning of this occasion, he does as well. He resists his mother's insistence that he do something about the lack of wine. We cannot know what caused him to change his mind to show that his time has come, at least to a few individuals. The only ones at the wedding feast made aware of his tremendous interference with nature are the few servants that had filled the jars and the small group of his disciples. They are the ones who really matter at this point. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. His disciples believed in him. From now on, they will stay with him through both the glory and the pain. And later, they will remember, they will understand, and they will proclaim the kingdom which they witness being ushered in with this sign. Years later, the Apostle Paul will try to interpret miracles as spiritual gifts to the brothers and sisters in Corinth. He makes it quite clear that nothing of value happens to the faithful community without the power and intervention of the Holy Spirit. In today's epistle, he says clearly, to each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Looking back at the gospel reading, we may wonder, what is the common good in turning water into wine at a wedding feast in Cana of Galilee? There may be no definitive answer to this question, but there is truth that shines through it. What John tells us is that the disciples, newly chosen, newly called, believe in Jesus as a result of this epiphany, this epiphany of changing water into wine. What John emphasizes is that this is the first sign that reveals that God's presence is unhindered within Jesus. This is his glory. On an ordinary day when two young people were married, as they have done through, as others have done through the ages, a young man from Nazareth named Jesus revealed that he has creative powers that can affect even nature. An epiphany for us and for him an uncovering that allows light to shine into a long creative process. 
It is an uncovering that shows us that his hour has indeed come. This isn't magic. It wasn't magic. This is the true connection to God, the Creator Father. Every epiphany is a moment of creation, even for us. Let us allow the light to shine for us and through us to lead us to reveal God's power to the world, to the weak and to the world, God's love for the neglected, God's mercy for all of us sinners. Above all, let us pray for an epiphany that reveals to us who Jesus Christ really is. Amen. Standing now, let us turn to page 358 and reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. <laughs> we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified, he has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people, form one, found in your prayer book on page 383. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Susan, Jennifer, and Porter bishops, for all the clergy and people. And I ask your prayers for the search committee of the dioceses as they discern the candidates' election of our 14th diocesan bishop and in our diocesan cycle, we pray for the clergy and members of Church of St. Michael's in Arlington, Phillips, Richmond, and Trinity, Fredericksburg. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy for this county of Middlesex, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For seasonable weather and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for those who travel on land, on water, in the air, or through outer space. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. I ask for your intercessions, either silently or aloud. We pray for baby Zubin, his family, and medical staff, for Diane Martin, Brother Christopher, Barbara Cockrell, Ellen Johnson, Joanne, and for those who may be suffering from COVID. We give thanks for those celebrating their birthdays this week, Donna Gates, Jerry May, Steve Richardson, John Hawkins, and Paige Whitcamp and for those celebrating their anniversaries, Robin and Sally Wells. For all our intercessions and thanksgiving, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and for the destitute, for prisoners and captives, for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for all who have died in the hope of the resurrection and for all the departed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. For the deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. In the communion of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. For thee, o Lord, Lord our God. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom and grant that we, your servants who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk, walk in your ways, ways to the glory of your, of your name. name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Once again, I want to thank those who are with us online and ask that you continue to pray for us as we pray for you. Um, I want to also give thanks and say thank you to Debbie, our organist. She is not able to be with her, us because she lives in Richmond where the weather is 
much worse than it would be here. And um, so she recorded all the music for us and sent it to us online. So that's why it sounds a bit different than it normally does, because it's not being played live. But thankfully, we do still have the music. Um, a reminder, we are not having Wednesday Eucharist um, until we come back to in-person services again. And unfortunately, our COVID numbers in our county continue to be very, very high. And we pray for a turnaround in that and for the health of those, again, who are suffering and positive with it. Anybody have any other announcements? <laughs> if not, um, do want to do want to remind our parishioners who, um, who at home um, that even though we're not able to be here in person, that you know the bills continue to come in. So if you're so inclined, please mail your offerings to church to our PO box and um, or or drop them by the office. Let us ascribe unto the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of, and of thine Lord. own have we given thee. We continue with Eucharistic prayer A. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and our archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Comes in the name of 
and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will, will come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, O Almighty Father now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. For those of you who are in the congregation, I will bring communion to you in your place. body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you an everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you an everlasting life. 
body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Using the prayer on page 366, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and with your loved ones, now and forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn 5, five to fit 33. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Thank you.